but, but putting the ad on Facebook and getting it in in the paper and mm -hmm. going on the local media and talking about the show and then getting loads of people there, that's marketing. Hello and welcome to another interview. Today, I have Liam Ball, who is also known as the Gentleman Magician. Yeah, that's me. I'm not going to lie, I do love the stash. Yes. And everything what you wear is so wonderful. Today, we want to talk about marketing, because you have a lot of ideas. Now, maybe even if it's not your ideas, I know you use a lot of ideas, yeah. and if you don't mind sharing with us some of your ideas or tips sure. and, and tricks, or even information on how to get them, maybe mm. credit the right sources, Yeah. Uh, all about marketing yourself as a magician. Let's start with how did you get into magic? How many years have you been doing magic oh and gosh. what inspired you? So I got into magic um, as a child. Um, so I was about 10. Um, I remember when I was really young, I used to sit with my dad and we'd watch TV magic. We'd watch like Paul Daniels. And okay. Paul Daniels used to have like a children's TV program. Right. Um, I think it was called Circle Square. And okay. he had characters like Wizvit, which was the, the hat and you know, right. all that kind of thing. Um, so I used to do that, um, and then one day we were we were out. Uh, I saw a guy selling uh, selling magic tricks to kids on a market. Uh, okay. And I was instantly was hooked. this in London? Tom Garden? No, gosh, no. Uh, it was in Wales. I used to live oh. in the north at the time. Oh. So yeah, so it was in Wales. Um, I was out there with my family, and we saw this guy selling magic. So I wanted. Uh, it was a set of the dynamic coins, you know, the hopping tankies. Yeah. Yeah. So I got some of those, um, and then yeah, that was pretty much it. And then uh, my dad was also a coach driver. Okay. So completely by fluke, one day uh, we were in Blackpool, where he went most summers, like four or five times a week. So in the summer holidays, I'd go with him. Yeah. And we found JB Magic. Okay. Uh, when it was uh, when it was still a joke shop with a little tiny glass cabinet at the back of the shop. Right. And right. Probably for ten or fifteen years, Mark Mason at JB Magic was my was he was my dealer. He was my dealer. Right. You know. Right. Um, and it, it got to a stage where we'd get on the coach in the morning with my dad, and we'd go to Blackpool, and I'd get off the coach and I'd walk to the magic shop, and then when he dropped all the customers off, he'd come and check on me, and wow. then he'd go and walk down the prom, and then he'd come back and we'd have lunch, and then he'd leave me there again, and I'd spend the whole day that's in the magic it, shop. Wow, so that's yeah, it was it was epic. Well, that's amazing. So then this is when you were in your teens, you would say. Yeah, I think probably from the ages of about maybe ten or twelve, certainly until I was sixteen or seventeen. Well, I mean, I joined the army at sixteen, um, oh. but uh, but you know there were the odd occasions when I'd come back and I'd, I'd you know I'd go to Blackpool either on my own or I'd go with mum and dad and you know we'd go and visit the shop there. Very nice. So tell us something. How did you get into magic as a full time job? Is this your full time job? Is this where you make your money? Or do you um, else? I am making money out of magic. It's not my full time job as yet. Um, I've recently had a major rebrand. I came to London two years ago with the concept that I'd be really happy maybe getting a gig or two a month. And some months that was true, and some months, you know, not so much, but I wasn't really fussed. I was doing lots of things like Magic Circle shows and right. some of the, the close-up shows with Chris Wood, and, you know, I got the occasional gig here and there, and, and that was lovely. And I was doing the things I wanted to do. Um, I was getting more involved in Magic. I'd lived in Manchester for sort of five or six years beforehand. So when I came to London, I knew that magic was something I wanted to do more of, but I don't think I realized at the time how much of my passion I'd lost. Right. Um, I don't think before I came to London, I picked up a deck of cards or learned any new tricks for maybe two or three years. I certainly mm. hadn't gigged in that time. So mm. it was nice to come and, and be more involved and do more stuff. And then, and then yeah, uh, December was just manic and, and I, I earned more money in December than I earned in my full-time job, and I, I did maybe six or seven gigs, and I thought, oh, actually, maybe I would like to do more of this, and right. since then I've... So I've now you're full-time magician? Um, I'm not quite full-time. I'm still working um, a day job, uh, so I've, I've, got some, I've got some salary coming in, okay. but my, my costs are split. I am earning money from Magic, so I've set up a, a company, and, and I'm doing all sorts of stuff there. Nice. So all of the things that I would have normally spent out on Magic, now I'm not spending. Uh, which is nice, and I've mm -hmm. got a real nice, simple, easy day job. But but yeah, certainly working and going full time. So the marketing does help, though, because that that's so important. It makes it? a huge difference. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I've learned is that marketing isn't one any simple thing. It's a culmination of everything that you do. There's a great analogy. I don't know which book it's from. A friend of mine was reading it to me a few weeks ago, and it was something along the lines of: if a circus comes to town. 
um, and they, they put a sign on the back of an elephant and the elephant happens to trample through the mayor's garden and flatten the flower beds and knocks over a fire hydrant and there's water going everywhere and then you know there's a big parade and the mayor makes an announcement and everybody laughs about it and it's in the press. All of those things on their own are all individual different things. Right. Um, and it says that one's an advertisement and one of them is a press release and one of them is a, a statement and so on. Mm. But it says that if you do all of those things then that's great press but if you do them all on purpose that's marketing. Wow. Um, and, and it's a real it's a real nice um, way of, of saying that all of the things that you can do like you know putting an advertisement out on the internet or on Facebook or in a local magazine or a newspaper well that's an advertisement that's not marketing you know and maybe getting on the radio is great but that's a media appearance it's not marketing right. um, and you know going out to a show and doing a public appearance is a public appearance but it's not marketing but but putting the ad on Facebook and getting it in in the paper and mm -hmm. going on the local media and talking about the show and then getting loads of people there that's marketing Wow. So what advice would you give someone who just wants to get into marketing themselves as a magician? Oh, um, any books to read or any There's any definitely books that I'd recommend uh, and, and they're books that have been recommended to me. So one of them um, is a book called How to Build a Brand in 30 Days, um, okay. which is really straightforward and it is exactly what it appears to be. Um, it starts out um, with the concept of what a brand is. So. I was disillusioned as to what a brand was at first. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think a brand is an appearance or the way that you look or maybe a brand is a logo or it's a colour scheme or maybe it's a combination of those things and actually it's none of those things at all. Your really? brand is what people think about you. Your brand is, is your footprint on the marketplace. Okay. Um, and it talks about some really, really obvious ones. For instance, if you look at Nike or, or Nike as we call them in the UK, the, the brand for Nike is not the swoosh, which is the tick, that, that, that's their logo, yes. but their brand is what they stand for, it's what people think of when they talk about Nike. Right. And if you think about John Lewis, you know, their brand is not, is not their logo or it's not their, their tagline of never known the undersold, their brand is what John Lewis stands for. So you think about what they stand for, mm -hmm. you know, it's good quality, it's the fact that, you know, they're, they're partner owns that everybody's got a stake in it that they care that's their brand right um, and it's what people think about you and how people perceive you is what your brand is mm. so it kind of starts there and then it and then it takes you through 30 exercises some of which take a couple of days and some of which don't and, and, and it starts you at the very beginning and it says the first thing that you need to do is find out what people think about you and, and group it into kind of five or six words Right. as to what, what people think your brand stands for and then you need to assess how positive or negative that is and you need right. to assess how well known or unknown you are um, and effectively going through the process in the book can take you from having uh, a, a negative and unknown brand and it can show you how to build it into a really positive, really well known brand and, and again well known is, is very much relative to what you are. So. You know, Nike is a well-known brand around the world, right. uh, but Bob's Coffee Shop around the corner is a really well-known brand in the neighbourhood. But you know, they don't need to know yeah. about Bob's Coffee Shop in New York. Yeah. They just need to know about it three streets down. Yes, um, depends on where your it, who your it, it audience depends is. exactly what your audience is. Yeah. So, it, and and you, you get a better understanding of that. So, how to build a brand in thirty days? I can't remember the author's name, okay. but it's a great book. Um, it's one that it recommends you take a couple of months over. Uh, and it's really, really good to go through. And there are some really interesting exercises and it really does make you sit back and scratch your head and think, actually, what is the answer to this question that's relevant to me? Mm -hmm. And how does that apply and why? And, and it, it takes you from saying, I want to be a magician and I'm going to do whatever I can to being able to say, oh, well, well, I want to be a magician and I want to be this kind of magician mm -hmm. and I want to work for this kind of person at this kind of an event yeah. and I want to do this kind of magic and I want to get known for these things. Yeah. Um, so it's that right makes in there very, very. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it takes you from a from a very wide perspective down to quite a good focal point mm. as to understanding who and what you are and what you represent. Um, and the other one that I'd recommend, um, again, one that I I have read and I'm reading, um, is called Story Brand, and that's by a guy called Donald Miller. Okay. Um, and what Story Brand does is it it basically tells you how to market yourself. 
So you already know what you've got and you know what you're selling, mm -hmm. um, and or, or at least you think you do. And then he takes you through a, a seven step process of how to turn your brand into a story and a story that your customer can place themselves in and be involved in. Um, and one of the, I mean, he, he goes over so many different things, but he explains why the story process works really well and how to apply it to your brand. Um, and, and the number of people who say, oh yeah, that's great, but it doesn't work for me because of this. And he says, well, actually it will work for you, but you need to think about it in this way. Um, and how to position yourself in the customer's mind. Um, and I think probably one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of people when they're getting into business or they're trying to market themselves make is they're trying to say to, to everybody, hey, I'm the hero that does this, you know, I'm the hero that can do these things. Mm. Um, and, and what Story Brand does is it says, actually, you don't want to be the hero. You, you need to be the guide. Your customer needs to be the hero. Right. Because if you right. think about every story that's ever been written, the hero is, is the, the, the number one guy in the story and he's got a problem to solve, but inevitably he can never solve it on his own. He always needs help from somebody because the mm. thing that he needs to do, he can't do on his own. He needs a guide and you're the guide. And he's the hero and you're the guide. And it's all about how good he's going to be after he's he's taken your help and, and, and ultimately he's booked you to do the things that you're going to do. Um, and Donald Miller also has a, a podcast. It's a weekly podcast, which is great. Um, and I mean, it's been out for a couple of years now, but you know, there are, there are some segments of that podcast where week by week he talks about each process of the, of the story brand and he interviews great people and they talk about some good stuff. And there's lots of really clever incentives and ideas and, and comments that like, you know, I remember listening to one by a guy who runs an American company called Chick-fil-A, which I think is kind of like a KFC type right. equivalent, yeah, but they're right. a national brand. Yeah. Um, and he talks about why and some of the things that they do and how it makes a difference. And, and some of them talk about, you know, how their staff um, are impacted by what they do and how that's a good thing for the brand and, and so on and so forth. Uh, and one of the ones that really st struck me um, and, and sort of really, really sort of made a, a big impact for me and when I was considering what my brand is was there was a guy, there was a German guy, again, I can't remember his name, but he, he runs a chain of hotels. Okay. And when he was getting into it, he was trying to turn the one hotel that he had into a brand. He now owns several. Um, and, and he was chatting to uh, a guy and, and he said, you know, well, how do I do that? And somebody said, well, it doesn't matter what you do. There is no brand in the hotel industry. And he said, right. well, what do you mean there's no brand? It doesn't matter where you go. No hotel in the industry at the moment has a brand. And they said, well, that's ridiculous. You look at Premier Inn or you look at Travel Lodge or you, know, you look at the Ritz or, and he said, no, 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 no. He said, they're, they're not brands, they're names. And if you go to a travel lodge, I mean, it's the same in the UK. If you go to a travel lodge in London and you go to a travel lodge in Edinburgh, mm. like they're the same travel lodge, but they're completely different experiences. Mm -hmm. And a brand means it doesn't matter where you set up shop, the experience is always the, the same, same. Right. no matter where you go. Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing. And then it's once you understand that, it's then a case of getting together all the collateral you know, uh, for a magician, it's about having the right website, it's about having the right image, it's about having the right business cards, it's about having a good brochure, yeah. it's about having a, a good showreel, and then it's about working out where your clients are, looking at what that customer journey is, what do they experience as they go through your process, how easy is it for those people, how difficult is it, if it is hard, how can you make it easy, if it is easy, how can you make it easier, um, and taking out as many blockers as possible to, yeah. to for somebody to effectively say, hey, I've seen this guy, I've seen Brendan, you know, I've seen him on the internet, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna give him a call and see if he's available for my event. And the yeah. concept is that if you've done the marketing well, by the time they pick up the phone to say, hey, are you available on the 14th of April, mm -hmm. like they're already 90% sold. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. I think I think I didn't want to speak too much in this interview because I think what you gave is just gold advice to the people watching. So thank oh, you for so. this. Uh, if you want to see more of Liam, definitely let me know. I can always get him back. He's a good friend of mine. <laughs> uh, leave your details down below in the video so they can see they can find you and see what your brand is all about. But otherwise, thank you for doing this. Uh, very well. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.